ordered a couple of these boxes here, me and John, and what they are is uh, cameras from Security Cam 2000, or Security, Security Camera 2000, I think it says right on there. Uh, John is actually behind the camera doing the video right now, so he's probably not going to say too much about it, but if I get anything wrong, he'll let me know. Uh, these cameras here are basically the same. They just have two different lenses on them, and we wanted to try them out. I got one that's called the... They're both PZ0420, but one has the 3.6 millimeter lens. That's this one. And the other one has the 6 millimeter lens, and that's that one. And this is because we're going to be getting into FPV. We've never done any FPV, but we were thinking about getting a camera, and we heard that these were good. Uh, one, one guy, I think it was Dick Gibson, and I can put a link up here to his channel, recommended these. But I've also seen them on RC groups and other places that they're supposed to be really good cameras. Uh, I was unfamiliar with the angles, the the amount of uh, viewing angle you get with a different model. So I printed out a little chart here. Now the one we got, the two we got was this, one was this 3.6 millimeter and it's supposed to have a 67 degree viewing area. And then the other one we got was the 6 millimeter, which is what, right here, right? And that's a 42 degree. You might want to point a little lower. A little lower right there. Lower. There? Uh, too far. Right there. Yeah. Six millimeter. 42 degree. Yeah. Recommended view distance is down here at the bottom. Like nine meters and so forth. I wasn't even looking at that. But that's on the chart too. And uh, you can pull this off that uh, Security Camera 2000 website. If you want to see more about it. But that's what it is. And we have found that uh, the, the wider the viewing area, probably the better it's going to be for FPV. We have, the one we have is almost the widest. The uh, 3.6 is 67, but there's a 2.8 too that's, I think it's 86 degrees. So maybe that one would be better, I don't know. But we're pretty happy with the one we got. Okay, now coming over here at the bench, you all just come on over. I just wanted to show what you get in the box. And what you get is, I'm going to disconnect this. What you get is this little camera. Get the light down here. There is actually the camera right there. That's the back. There's a little crystal here. There's the front. And this lens is, you can adjust the focus by screwing it in and out. The camera, the camera is very light. I mean, it's only just a couple ounces or so. And you also get this little board here which has some buttons on it so that you can adjust the programming or the features of the camera to your liking. We've used it at the default and it looks just fine, so I haven't actually used the board yeah, but it has a menu button in the middle and, you know, the usual up, down, left, and right. So you can go through the menus and adjust your parameters. And then the other two things are you get this little cable here and you get this cable. This one looks like if you're actually going to hook it to a security system, maybe to a DVR. You might have a bunch of these cameras hooked to a DVR. You would use this little BNC and this is the power jack. And uh, both of those cables plug into the back of the board on this plug right here. Let me zoom in over here. Right there. Let me get some of the point with. Right there. It's a little three pin plug. Now what we've done is taken one of these cables and basically it's cut in half and we've got it over here where we can hook some alligator clips to the three wires. Now you may notice these collars are different than the cable that came with it. 
because I had some spares that weren't the same color but they had the same connector. So the red wires on this one's actually brown but I put the red alligator clip on there and the and the yellow wire is sort of more of an orange and I got the video the yellow alligator clip on that one and the ground I got green so on this cable it would have black for ground red for voltage and yellow for video on mine is not the same but it's still I know what they are so that's all that counts so I'm just going to plug this in uh, this way right <laughs> there we go Got a little piece of foam here to hold the camera upright. Now what we discovered with this camera is it'll actually work on a pretty low voltage. On the side it said from 9 to 12 volts, but I found it'll work down to like 7.5 volts. Maybe even 6. Maybe even 6. So that's good for FPV if your battery starts going dead. Then mm. it'll still operate and you won't lose your video. Mm. So... What I've got rigged up here is I've got the video actually going to a TV and I, I've got it hooked on right here, the video and the ground going to this wire that goes over to this TV set. So when I plug the voltage in, and here's the voltage pin, this cable here in case you're wondering, it didn't come with it, it actually came with the fat sharks. These are fat shark dominators and the camera works with that too but uh, I wouldn't be able to show it to you so I'm using a TV set. So I've got the Fat Shark cable. Uh, if I want to use the Fat Shark vid for the video I just unplug this and plug it in the Fat Shark video pin here. But instead I got it on the TV. But I'm still going to feed voltage to the camera through the Fat Shark cable. Okay the voltage goes in this jack in the Fat Shark cable and comes back out this jack to the camera and it's only a two cell LiPo so the most this can have is 8.4 volts that's if it's fully charged and we've run it down to like 7 volts and it still works so here we have it over on the thing here let me turn this a little bit uh, this way there we go so there's the picture the picture quality and it looks pretty good. Yeah. See up to three screens there. You can see the sort of the uh, out to infinity mirror effect here. Yeah, that's what I do with the zoom as a cool effect. I zoomed in on that one screen in the screen there and made it look a little funky, you know. I just tilted it up a little more to get a little more light on the subject. So there it is. And when I move my hand, you can see the latency down through here. First this arm moves, then that arm, then that arm, you know, all in succession. So yeah. there's a little bit of latency there. So when you do an FPV, you'll get there's some latency for each stage in your FPV gear, but it's not enough to really affect flying. You can, it's only like a few milliseconds or something, nothing big to worry about. So for the Fat Shark Dominator goggles, you can do exactly the same thing, but I think the screen will look more, you know, uh, 640 by 480 looking on the Fat Sharks, whereas this is kind of stretched out because I've got a widescreen monitor. So if I look on, put my Fat Sharks on, and I had a video splitter there, I'd be able to see both at once. But I can say they look good when I do have the uh, Fat Sharks connected. Now the, the camera itself only uses uh, around 120 milliamps, so it's not a very big current draw. So you don't have to worry about it drawing down the battery. We only have this small battery on here, and uh, this thing will probably run for hours just sitting there like that. So there's not much need in putting a huge battery on that system. Now if you had the uh, battery for your uh, transmitter, your video transmitter, uh, you could use that same battery for the camera. It shouldn't be any problem. So what do you think, John? Anything else we need to add to this? We don't know any more than this, really. We're just getting into FPV and 
looking at some of this equipment and eventually we'll put it all together and make an FPV system. And maybe do a video on it. And maybe we'll do a video on each stage so you can see what we're learning and what mm -hmm. we're finding out and uh, we'll let you know, know how it all works. Uh, we ordered some equipment from ReadyMade RC so we've got a 1.3 gigahertz uh, receiver transmitter video setup for the video link and we'll see how that works. We might put it on a one of John's uh, RC cars and just see if we can do some FPV on the ground first just so we can get an idea how to do it and what it feels yeah. like before we try getting up in the air. Yeah, get practice that way too so you don't have to worry about crashing a plane to be on the ground already. Right. It's got probably going to be some things to learn about it. Yeah, like knowing where's water and to how to avoid it, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll get back with you with some more videos and uh, we'll get into this stuff and any beginners that are getting into FPV might be interested in this and just to see what's what's going on. And we'll see you on the tube. Uh, any comments you have just put them under the video and don't forget to subscribe.